Hi, welcome back to Drug School. Uh, it's Adam again, and today we're going to introduce pharmaceutical calculations to you. Um, before we get to the intro music, I just want you to know we're going to try to do this as stress-free as possible. Every time I teach this class uh, in the college level, when we get to pharmacy math, everybody freaks out, and you really don't need to. So, um, I'm going to do this as stress-free as I possibly can, and um, without further ado, let's get to it. Welcome to drug school. Welcome back to drug school and then today I wanted to get into doing some dosage calculations and this is going to be the first of our math series and I'm really going today to do the more common 90% of the, the pharmacy math that you're going to do is going to be involving a couple of calculations I want to practice with you today. Um, one of the other things that we're going to uh, introduced starting with this series. If you go to our Patreon page and you become a patron of Drug School, patreon.com slash drug school, um, there will be some practice questions for you uh, that the uh, would typically show up on the Pharmacy Technician Certification Board exam. And uh, this will give you an opportunity just to kind of get a feel for what PTCB is going to ask of you when you go through the PTCB exam. So today we're really going to um, look at this this um, type of calculation because you're really going to see a lot of this in clinical practice and I want to make sure that um, everyone is familiar with doing these calculations. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started and um, I'm going to start off first we're going to do a couple of common questions, um, but uh, there's a couple of things that you're going to have to remember as we go through this this particular series. Um, first thing that you need to remember is that there are 24 hours in one day. Um, that is going to become a recurring theme as we get into the pharmacy mathematics. Um, and it's going to be a very common calculation that you're going to see. Uh, even if we do IV drip rates, you're going to have to remember that there are 24 hours in one day. So we'll, we'll revisit that calculation a lot. Um, rule number two um, we're going to talk about is always use the max dose. That's supposed to be an O. So always use the maximum allowed dose on a prescription. Um, that's going to come into play in just a moment. Um, rule number three. You only have to remember how to multiply, subtract, add, and divide. If you can do those four things, um, there will be a little bit of basic algebra. Um, uh, that won't come into play in this particular video, so don't fret it yet. Um, it'll, it'll be there, but it won't be in this particular video. Um, in this particular video, too, I'm not going to get into the abbreviations of a prescription. We'll talk about that in a later series. Uh, later on in this series, I should say. So, don't panic about that yet. So, 
what are we typically going to see on a prescription? Well, let's take um, a common antibiotic. We'll do clindamycin um, 300 milligram. Um, and clindamycin 300 milligrams uh, in dental land and in a lot of infections will come with a very specific instruction uh, to take uh, two tablets now and then it's going to be usually one four times a day uh, that QID stands for four times times per day for seven days. And the question that you're going to get asked on the PTCB exam is how many capsules, uh, these are going to be capsules by the way, how many capsules do you dispense? Because a lot of doctors will not do their own mathematics. They will instead leave you this abbreviation on a prescription. Um, QS, uh, QS stands for uh, quantity sufficient. Um, so how many capsules are you going to need? So we have two for the first dose. And we're going to add that to 7 times 4. Because in each of the subsequent doses for 7 days, and you're going to do that 4 times a day, 4 times a day for 7 days. Um, so 4 times 7. You need 4 per day for 7 days. So 4 per day times 7 days. These days, by the way, will cancel out. And 4 times 7 is 28. And notice I put that in parentheses. You always do parentheses first. And then we need to add the two capsules at the end. 28 plus 2 is going to be the remaining number that you need. And that is going to be a quantity of 30. So this QS um, will need to be documented on your prescription. Um, so when you document this on a prescription, my stylist wants to cooperate with me. When you uh, document this on a prescription, um, you write out QS equals number 30, uh, number 30, and then you initial that. Uh, that you did that math. Um, you do need to document this, this set of mathematics on your prescription, by the way. Legally, uh, this set of mathematics needs to be documented on a prescription in order for an insurance company to take that QS. Uh, QS in most states is not a legal quantity. Uh, so if it is something where you can actually derive a quantity, um, then you can. Um, but you have to document it on the prescription as to what that quantity sufficient is. Um, the next thing that we're going to talk about is calculating day's supply. Um, that is going to be a field that you have to fill in on every insurance claim. Um, it is an auditable field, so you have to calculate it correctly. Um, and we're going to use something that um, is a uh, very common prescription. Uh, and it's typically seen after surgery. Um, we're going to use... Norco. I use Norco specifically because Norco is a opioid um, and it is subject to a lot of regulations. So you have to accurately calculate your day supply on Norco specifically because you could run afoul of the law if you don't. So we'll use Norco 5325. And doctors will typically usually write this prescription one to two tablets every four to six hours as needed. 
So one to two every four to six hours as needed. Uh, won't be terribly uncommon that you write or that you see a quantity of 30. Um, and since I practice in Michigan, um, on all controls, your number has to be written out as well. So you would see it in, if you were in Michigan, this is how your script would be written. Um, so this is our prescription. And we need to figure out how many days this is going to last. So how many days will our X last? Remember what I said in our first slide, always use the max dose. So with that being said, let's go back to our prescription. And our question is, how many days will it last? Well, what is our max dose? Well, we know the maximum number of tablets they can take in each dose is going to be two. And it's right there. Now, the other rule that we had to follow, and that was rule number one, is that there are 24 hours in one day. Now, if you follow that logic, the six hours is not the most frequent that you can take this prescription. So um, we're going to ignore the six hours. Six hours is white noise. Because if you're taking it in a 24 hour clock, four hours means you can take it six times a day. So you can have two tablets, two tablets, and this four hours equals six times a day. Because if you wake up at four o'clock in the morning and you're in pain after surgery, um, it, you might need a couple of tablets to get you back to sleep. So how many times, or how many tablets can you take in a day? Well, if you can take it six times per day, and you can take two tablets per dose, Again, this is just going to be basic multiplication. Um, 6 times 2 is 12 tablets. Now, we're going to give them 30 tablets, which means these 30 tablets can be used at a rate of 12 per day. And 30 divided by 12 is roughly going to be equal to, uh, it, it comes out two and a half days. Um, so this is 2.5 days. Um, your pharmacy system will not let you put this in as a decimal. So we're going to round that up and it's going to be three days. That's how long this prescription will last. And that is how really all you need to do to calculate day supply. You'll do that calculation so frequently in retail pharmacy, uh, you'll eventually be able to do the math in your head without really even thinking about it. Um, uh, after 10 years of pharmacy, I can actually look at a prescription and actually do the math backwards. And in fact, in my real practice nowadays, I actually do have to do the math backwards because I'm going to be given the quantity and the day supply, and I have to determine out of that how the script actually reads. So a lot of times, if you're working in managed care, you're actually working backwards off the script because you don't have the directions that tell you exactly what the script is going to tell you. Whereas in common mathematics, um, when you're working in retail pharmacy, you have the directions and the quantity and you have to tell the insurance company how many days that's going to last. And that's where the, this calculation becomes very important because Whatever you tell the insurance company has to at least meet or exceed what you bill for. Because if they come back and audit your pharmacy and you had called that a two-day supply, they would recoup you and tell you that you were wrong. And uh, when I told you that the regulations matter, um, let's say this was written for an eight-day supply. Well, I live in the state of Michigan, and if the person is not opioid tolerant or they're not on a chronic pain regimen, I can't dispense more than a seven day supply. So if they had written for an eight day supply, I actually have to chop that script into pieces because otherwise I would be in violation of state and federal law. Uh, well, in this particular case, state law. Um, so let's look at some liquids. And 
Um, I'm going to go back to uh, slide number one. I'm going to insert num uh, rule number four. And that's it. In these calculations, the drug doesn't matter. But the strength of the drug does. So when we look at a liquid, and um, I'm going to use um, sodium chloride, salt water. For the layperson, this is salt water. I'm going to introduce the concept of a concentration briefly because sodium chloride is always going to be written in a percentage, 0.9%. This is, by the way, um, if you ever see this abbreviated on a, a script or you uh, see either the words NS or sometimes this will be called normal saline. Um, so do you, uh, NS or normal saline refers to sodium chloride uh, 9% and um, we're going to make this an irrigation. And uh, sodium chloride for irrigation comes in multiple size bottles. Um, but um, let's say we're doing a, a sinus rinse and I tell my patient to irrigate each nostril with 20 ml twice per day. Um, how many mls do you need? How many ml do you need? God, I sound like Sal Khan. Um, if you ever watched the Khan Academy in YouTube, you'll understand that. I'll actually uh, put his um, channel in my recommended because he teaches a lot of mathematics too. Um, if my explanations don't help, his will. Um, so in this particular instance, we're going to uh, irrigate each nostril. Um, if you have a normal nose, there's two of them. So we're going to assume that we have two nostrils and we're using 20 mLs. So we have 20 mLs per dose and we're going to do that twice a day. So since we have two nostrils, Again, this is assuming that somebody hasn't done something really funky with their face um, and had a Michael Jackson uh, rhinoplasty or something. Um, we're going to assume that they have two nostrils. And uh, since we have two nostrils, you need 20 mLs for each of them. So we have 20 mLs each. hit the button on my stylus. So bear with me just a second. Okay, so 20 mLs each. 2 times 20 equals 40 mL. That's how much we need for a for one dose. We do two doses per day, which means we're going to need 80 mL. Now, I forgot to do something in this problem, and I just realized what I did. Oops. So, um... How many ml do you need? Well, how long are we going to be doing this for? If it's one day, you need 80 milliliters. If we're going to do this for an entire month, let's say, um, let's um, get rid of this question mark, um, and we'll change the question for 30 days. So if we need 80 mls per day, 
minute I sound like I need a nasal saline irrigation right now. Um, but um, so we have 80 ml, we're going to do it for 30 days. How many milliliters do we need? Um, 80 times 30 is going to be 2,400 milliliters. Um, you can dig out a calculator and check my math on that. Um, so, but it's going to be 2,400 milliliters. Um, and where I draw those two zeros from, by the way, one of the properties of mathematics, if you have zeros in both of these numbers, when you multiply them together, those zeros um, add up. So two zeros over here means you have two zeros on the other side of the equal sign. That's just a nice quick shortcut in mathematics that uh, you might want to take note of. Now, let's take that same sodium chloride prescription. Um, and we're going to dispense that using lock flushes. Um, lock flushes basically um, are just preloaded syringes. Um, what a lock flush usually does is it irrigates out an IV catheter. Um, but if we're going to use lock flushes, um, they're 10 ml syringes. They just come preloaded. Um, and we have those 2,400 milliliters. How many of those syringes are you going to use? So how many how many of those syringes do you need? Well, if they come in 10 ml syringes, we're going to just divide this by 10 ml and Basically, one zero cancels out. 240 divided by one is 240. Syringes. And that's going to be your answer. So how many syringes do you need to fill that prescription? It's going to be 240. Um, the last little dosage calculation I'm going to get into and then we'll wrap up for the day. That'll probably round out my half hour is we're going to deal with liquids. Um, and I'm going to deal with liquids in the normal sense of amoxicillin. Um, A-O-M-X-I-C-I-L-L-I-N. You'll get really good really fast at doing amoxicillin calculations. In the next video, I'm going to talk about um, some more advanced calculations with liquid solutions. Um, but for now, we're going to get the basics down and then um, I'll ramp this up in the next video. So you can save your stressing out for the next video. Um, we'll uh, just do the basics. Um, so we're going to do 250 milligrams per 5 ml. That's a very common um, concentration of, of amoxicillin. Okay. And this is going to be a suspension. Um, and if you go back to our pharmacology series, um, suspensions are going to need to be um, dissolved into water. This is a reconstitutable powder. So when you get this, you're going to have to add a certain amount of water to it. Um, but we'll talk about that in the next video. We'll talk about reconstituting in the next video. But for right now, um, we need to do 7.5 ml twice daily for seven days. Antibiotics commonly are getting shorter and shorter in duration of therapy. So we're going to do seven days. This used to be a 10 day prescription. Um, in common era, they have shortened these down a little bit. So we're going to go for seven days. And again, a uh, physician decided he did not want to do his own math in this particular one and gave you that abbreviation to dispense a quantity sufficient. So how many uh, milliliters do we need? 
Well, 7.5 ml per dose. And we're going to multiply that by the number of times per day. That's going to be 2. So for each day, you need 15 ml. And then you're going to need that for 7 days. Now you have 5 times 7 is 35. Um, 7 times 1 plus 3 means you need 105 ml. What is your dispense quantity going to ultimately be, though? Because I have news for you. It does not come in a 105 milliliter package. Your choices are 50, 75, 100. Sometimes you get a 125. That's usually augmenting. Um, if you can find a 125, great. Um, and then sometimes there's also a 200 milliliter. So these are going to be your package choices. Um, so those are going to be your package choices. And you're going to need more than one to solve this problem because um, you can get there one of a couple of different ways. Okay, so you need 105 milliliters. These are your choices to pick from. Okay, so you can dispense this in one of, well, depending on what you have in stock. If this is um, the prime of infection season, which I'm recording this in February, uh, this is prime infection season right now, I probably would be going through amoxicillin like it's going, uh, like it's basically water in my pharmacy. Um, so since we're gonna consider this going to be a flying off the shelf drug, you may actually run into places where you don't necessarily have the size that you want. Now, you can do this in a couple of different ways. You can use multiple different packages if you need to. I don't recommend doing that. It throws off your inventory and your pharmacy system is a little inflexible about this. Ultimately, you have to use the smallest quantity that gets you to the closest to what you need. Since we need 105 mLs, um, we cannot use one single 100. That's not going to work. You can, if it's available and you have it in stock, use a 125. Then you can do it in one package. You just label the bottle, reconstitute it, and walk it or let it walk out the door once you scan it out. If you do not have a 125, let's say you do not have a 125. Um, let's say you have 50 or 75. You, the closest you can get is 150 milliliters out of either one of these two. Um, I wouldn't recommend using 100s unless you can prove you do not have one of these, in which case you need two 100s or you need one 200. But if you're going to use 50s or 75s, you can. Um, so to dispense 105 milliliters, it's going to be 3 times 50 or... 2 times 75, and yes, that's going to get you to 150 milliliters. That's perfectly fine. Um, you could use, if all you had was a 200, I would document on a script that the patient needed it right away, and all you had was 200 milliliters. Um, that way, you, when you get audited, you don't get nailed for dispensing an excessive amount of a medication. Um, so... Um, when you get these, when you get to the dispense quantity, you're going to have to remember what package sizes it comes in because you may uh, need 105 milliliters, but you're going to have to come up with a uh, slightly different way of getting there. Uh, so this is going to be the basics of pharmacy math. Um, these are, when you walk into a retail pharmacy, these are the ones you're going to be doing day in, day out, um, all day long, and you will be expected to know these. Uh, they will probably teach it to you at some point if you're walking in and unlicensed or you're in one of those five unregulated states and one unregulated territory. Um, but uh, this is going to be the bread and butter of what you do all day long. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Um, and that way, uh, every time I introduce a new video, you get notification of it. Patreon.com slash drug school. And um, in the next day or two, you'll be able to go out there and get some practice problems. Again, this is Adam, and I look forward to having you join us again sometime soon. Thanks for watching.